Hello and welcome to Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you are looking to substantially increase your caseload in the next six months, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Solutions, the local law firm. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, everyone. I hope you guys are having a rockin', rockin' week thus far. Today is our special episode where we talk about the state of social media. So I'm being um, joined by my co-host for that segment of the show, and her name is Laura Ship, and you guys know her. How's it going, Laura? Hey, Frank. How are you? Everything's going great here. How are things over there? Things here in Jersey are fine. I cannot complain. Um, can you believe half of the year is over already? No. You know, I'm I'm getting ready to do a presentation, and I was going to kind of do something along the lines of, it's halftime. How are you prepared? Like, I've got a presentation coming up in a couple of weeks. And I just, when I was thinking about it, I'm like, where the heck did the year go? Yeah. I mean, it's just like so fast and, and business is going really fast. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if people think that way in terms of like halftime. Did you accomplish all your goals so far in six months? You know, how are you set up for the next six months? All of that good stuff. I usually do that quarterly. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, you know, a lot of my goals are a little you know, for, for 12 months, it's, you know, it's a little, a little steep sometimes. Yeah. So each quarter I see, I check how I'm doing. So speaking of that, I do the same thing and I have this planner. I love it. Actually, it's always sitting on my desk. Have you ever heard, and you know, this is like so non-sponsored and it's so, you know, we're just talking off the cuff here, but have you ever heard of the full focus planner by Michael Hyatt? Um, yes, because you mentioned it I think oh, the last time I? you were here and, um, <clears throat> Uh, and I looked into it. Yes. Did you? Yes. I love that. I love that thing. Cause it, hmm. it's a quarterly planner and it really makes you stay focused on your goals and all that good stuff. So, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I'm glad you reintroduced it to me because I did not take action on getting it last time. You didn't. I just, okay. I just got my newest one. I haven't even like cracked it out of the binding yet. It's here. Oh, nice. Ready nice. to go. Ready to start planning for the next quarter. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because I, mine, I I do it electronically. Mm, mm-hmm. I do everything electronically. I don't know why, but um, I should start writing stuff down because I do notice when I write stuff down, it kind of happens a lot quicker. Yeah. Because there's a kinetic uh, connection, the brain, hand, or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we went down a <laughs> rabbit hole. People want to hear about social media. I know. Um. But uh, you know, before we get into social media, though, let's uh, let, let, let's let, let's talk about goals and stuff like that. How how was your first half? I mean, it's been six months since we've talked to you. How was your 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 first uh, your first six months of this uh, of this year? You know, it's been really really good. Um, I I've actually hit my goals. I've hit you know my client goals. Um, I've hit some financial goals. So I'm really you know. I'm really excited. And it's funny when you did say stuff about writing things down, I think that makes a huge difference because it makes you a little bit more accountable, right? Yeah. <clears throat> For going through that. And um, yeah. And, you know, one of the things is to surrounding yourself with the right people, yep. um, people who are like minded, who can keep you accountable for your actions and things like that. So, and I know that you're part of kind of something like that, where you've got some people that you always meet up with every once in a while and talk about business and you go on a retreat and do that. I just think that's phenomenal. And I really need more of those people in my life, you know? Yeah. It's important. I mean, it keeps, it keeps me accountable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Well, that's cool. Now, would you say uh, what attributed for you hitting your goals, were you uh, just more focused or what, you know, what, what would you think, what would you say was your, the secret to making everything happen the, in the first six months? I think it was choosing more specific focused goals. And that's why I kind of like this planner too, because it makes you think about how 
how you, you're setting up your life, like how you want to live your life <clears throat> and um, being specific. And also it's also the books that you read too. Like right now I'm reading, actually I'm listening to Think and Grow Rich. Um, mm. Have you read that book before? Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that book. So I've, this is my second time through. So um, I'm doing that right now. And then I think it's also the people that you listen to that help me stay focused. So I love Brian Tracy. Um, I know he's like really old school. I love, um, what's his name? Proctor. Well, I forget his first name. He just passed ba- away. Ba- Bob. Ba- ba- yeah. I love him. Listen to him a lot. And then somebody in my space that I, I listen to as a content creator is um, Dan Ko. Are you familiar with Dan K-O-E? No. Dan Ko. So um, he's, he's always talking about, um, you know, content creation and, and how important it is and how if you really want to stand out, you've got to do like follow some things that he talks about. So I, I listen to him. I think he releases a new um, YouTube video once or twice a week. So I always mm-hmm. listen to him. So he's, he's good too. So I think it's, it's all of those things together. I don't think there's one silver bullet that says, this is what's going to help you hit your goals. I think you just need to be very thoughtful and choosy on who you listen to and why and help to shape your focus and your goals. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have some kind of something to relate to. Like, mm-hmm. Because if there's someone like, like, for, like one of the things with me, and and I promise, guys, I will get back to the topic. But <laughs> one of the things with me is, um, you know, if someone is too rowdy and too crazy and and just, you know, like shouting and and all that, that turns me off. So mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not saying that what he or she is saying is incorrect, but I I turn I shut down because mm-hmm. that noise is not allowing me to pen it it's not allowing that the content is not being allowed to penetrate my my mind because i'm being distracted by the the hoopla yeah. but when that person is authentic and you know delivering stuff like say like brian tracy so i'm it's funny you asked you you mentioned him i could i could absorb that a lot better because i can you know I, I can you know now i can take action based on what he's saying yeah Easier. because yeah, he delivers it in such a practical way, and there's not a lot of hype behind it. It's just solid, value-rich information. Yeah, which, you know, that's I'm the same way. I don't go for the hype either. Yeah, I, I can't stand <laughs> it. I, I've I've walked away from seminars because mm-hmm. of that. the same. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was a waste of money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's talk about social media. The second half of 2024. What's going on in the world of social media? Are there any big significant changes that you've seen since the last time we got together? Well, you know, I I still, I think it's still kind of the same, you know, the other, there are some things that are, they're coming, coming out, like people are worried about TikTok leaving and the ban on TikTok. And there's a lot of creators out there who are making a lot of money, um, through TikTok, I just think we need to wait it out and see what happens. Um, and I'm, I, you know, it would be good if we did have somebody who is waiting in the wings to kind of swoop in if it does go away. You know, I don't I, think I, I can tell you, I, I I have I actually have a prediction about that. Oh, okay, yeah, I want to hear. I'm thinking YouTube Shorts is going to take over if that happens. Yeah, because I don't think Facebook and Instagram are up to the task. They're trying to be that. And I think you I think you're right. I think YouTube shorts are making a way for people. Um, it's just I think more of the mainstream needs to get on that. If you know what I mean, I don't think a lot of mainstream people are using it right now. I could be wrong, but I don't I see more and more of it being fed to me. Um, on YouTube before long long form videos are so it could be yeah it could be YouTube could be the the next TikTok if this gets banned but I know so that's like one of the things that I'm seeing is people are trying to figure out what their move is going to be should it be banned um, you know so that's the one thing but the um, the other thing that I really am noticing couple things like authenticity is really important. Like we were just talking about hype and how the two of us kind of shut down when there's hype. 
And I feel like audiences recognize that and we're not the only people who do that. I'd rather sit there and listen to someone who maybe stammers a little bit as they're trying to get through a live video or, you know, a reel or something like that um, than somebody who is way too polished and way too hyped up because are they just slick? And, and people are buying into the slickness or do they really know their stuff? And are they, are they who they say they are and have they really gotten the results that they say they're getting? And so I think a lot of people um, appreciate that authentic, um, that uh, authentic face. And so yeah. whenever your audience can be the face of the brand, and I know sometimes that's hard because um, just the nature of what they do, it's a demanding industry and a demanding job. But um, whenever they can be the face of their brand, I think it goes a lot further than um, than maybe more static photos or stock fo- photography or stock video, if that yeah. makes sense, you know? Yeah. I've so, noticed also now in the ads world, um, they're allowing a lot more text, let's say on mm-hmm. Facebook. Which is good. You can you can create a you know on the image you can create more text, whereas before that was not allowed. Um, so I, and, yeah, and, sorry. I think that's no. really important because I think people are visual people, and you know they'd rather learn things visually than sit there and read a wall of words. And if you can put things in an infographic or put the main key point on the graphic, I think you're ahead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then if people want more detail, they know to go into the actual caption of the post and get the majority of what you're trying to say. So I'm happy to see that shift in ads mm-hmm. for sure. Yep. Yep. For sure. For sure. But um, but some of the things like when we were talking about authenticity, and I was thinking, like, who does a really good job of this that a lot of people know? <clears throat> and I think there's a little bit of hype there, but I think it's his authentic self. But I think Gary V does a good job of this because he just doesn't care what somebody's going to think about his opinion, whether they agree with him or not. He just says what's there and what's on his mind and he's un- unapologetic about it. And I kind of like that. Um, cause that's his authentic self, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if you, um, if you can do that in your business, and maybe even sometimes have an unpopular opinion, um, but have the the facts to back it up. I think that's important too. I think being polarizing is important for the right yeah. reasons. For the right reasons. But 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 Gary V isn't overly hyped though. Like, no, but I, I don't I don't consider him overly hyped. No, I guess not. But he can get very. I guess not. He's he's not like um, you know like a big dog and pony show at all. Um, but he can get very passionate about what he's saying. And I oh, think yeah. that that passion is his true authentic self. And and I love when he does that because then, you know, you've hit on something that is true. And, yeah. and I think we all need to be a little bit more like that. So. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, and I love how he does this, um, when he's just in his everyday life, like, you know, I wish we could all have a camera crew following us like 24 <laughs> seven, like they do with Gary V, but like just in his everyday life, I mean, he's just like spewing information and it's good information and it's m- good marketing information. I think that's why, you know, he's so popular and, and, um, you know, and that I think we should need to take a lesson from his book there about that. And that was one of the things that I was going to talk about today is we talked about um, short form video being still even more popular. And a lot of people don't like to be in front of the camera, but there's a way to do short form video without being, without showing your face. And that is just taking like average B-roll in your everyday life, in your office. What may sound so boring is not really, you could be pouring a cup of coffee or sitting at your laptop and working and just recording that whole thing. And all you do is put um, some word text over your video that puts your 
point across. So people are seeing you. They know it's you because it's not a polished video. It looks like your surroundings. Um, it's you actually doing everyday tasks. However, you're putting music behind it and maybe you're putting some text overlay on it and it's less than 30 seconds, but it's a point. Like it's some sort of a point that you're trying to get across to your audience. And I, mm. I, t I tested that recently once um, for myself. I was in Miami and um, I took a video of my surroundings of me like walking on the beach and the waves coming up. And all I did was a POV po post. So it was video. And I just said, POV social media does not have to be hard. And, um, you know, and I did some more, I put some more text in there too. I can't remember what I said, but basically I was just saying, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Sometimes I think we make it harder than it has to be. Um, so, so you, like, and that's a perfect example of you just typing on your computer or pouring a cup of coffee People just want to see the real authentic you and then whatever point you have to make on top of it. Does that and that was sense? a, that was a TikTok. Yeah, I did a TikTok and a reel. Um, so it's on, it's on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. Mm. And it, per it performed pretty well. So cool. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Any, so any other new things? Not so much new, but I really think that carousel posts, um, do very well on Instagram and LinkedIn. And again, it's a way to tell a story about your business. So I have a little example of, and it's like a polarizing example because it goes against um, the hustle culture a little bit. But yeah. if you say um, unconventional ways, I run my seven figure business, for example, or six figure business, whatever it may be. Right. Um, you can do a series of, of slides and the first one might just be a picture of you sitting at your computer, or this would be an example for me. Um, the first slide would be a picture of me sitting at my computer and over the top of that slide, it'll say, um, I don't start my day until 11 AM slide two might be, um, just a picture of my laptop or something. It says, I don't have any employees, which is true. I don't, um, slide three might be a picture of my calendar. And it says, I keep my calendar free of calls and meetings. Um, so I can focus on my work. Slide four could be, I don't sell high ticket items. Most are under a hundred dollars. If I'm selling like in Facebook or, or Instagram or something like that. So the point is, is like, if you take these series of pictures, again, they don't have to be your face. It could just be um, areas of your work and then just tell a picture on those, on those slides and people right. scroll through them and they get a lot of engagement that way. So, mm. and then I saw something that you did. I think it was yesterday and it's posting memes. What meme did you post? And you said it was so relevant and I'm like, oh, I need to bring this up in our, um, in our podcast. And I can't believe it's escaping <laughs> me right now. Um, yeah, no, no, I, I post, I, I, I post random stuff. I'm, I'm not a consistent poster, as you know. No, you're not. But it was something to do with, um, oh my gosh, I'm so mad that I didn't write this down, but you don't remember doing it. Um, I, I just, you know, I, I <laughs> so uh, audience don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> follow follow what Laura does. I I post on whims. So if I get an inspiration on whatever it is, I'll just post. And it's not consistent. Uh, social media is all about consistency. Oh, it totally is. And I I just um I feel like it was something to do with motivation or something mm -hmm. or or, or humor. Well, most likely motiv motivational right. or, or or humor, you know, because that's that's usually what inspires me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyways, it was a meme, but memes, as long as they are um, relatable, relatable to what you're doing mm -hmm. um, or what your business is, they work really well if you can tie it in. And you'll see that a lot. Um, you ever see the guy who's standing out, maybe it's in the middle of New York City, and he's holding a cardboard um, box lid or something like a piece of cardboard, and he writes a message on there. Mm -hmm. um, of how he's feeling or the prove me wrong guy who's sitting in the park. Have you ever seen these memes? And he's I don't like, think so. oh, okay. Well, they're kind of funny. Cause it's like things that people are thinking every day, every day, but don't say it out loud. Right. And they, they're right. just in normal public places doing these things. So those things are working really well. Um, some other things that are working really well 
our history posts. So, and, and um, Facebook is making it easier for you to do this because they'll do like, um, they'll prompt you with a picture that maybe you posted five years ago. And it says then in um, big, big letters over your picture from five years ago. And then it's got an arrow pointing to now. And then it's prompting you to put in a photo of what that same image looks like for you today. Oh, I've seen that now. Yeah, but they're doing that with celebrities, though. Yeah, well, they, yeah, so some of them, yes, they're doing that with celebrities. Um, Facebook, you know, prompted me. I had a picture of a car from like seven years ago that I had purchased. And it's like, well, what's that look like for you now? And um, it's a different car. So if I had wanted to, I could have like put my new car up there and like tell the story right. behind the two cars. So, um, so that's working really well. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so those are some of the things that I think are working. It's, oh, nostalgia too. I did this with my daughter yesterday. Um, okay. I'm old enough to remember how we each needed two keys to get into our car. Do you remember that? Uh, oh yeah. I remember. Yeah. You have like a rounded key and a square key. And, a square key. And, and I'm like, well, like, so, you know, I asked her what this, I go, why would we have two keys for our cars? And she had no idea why. And, you know, she's got the type of car that she puts her keys in her purse and she doesn't even need to pull yeah. them out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, the she, pub. She, she, she presses the button. Right. Yep. So, um, <laughs> but so anytime that you can do nostalgic posts like that, um, so if your business has been around for a while, some of my favorite ones to see is how your um, logo might have evolved through the years. Um, just, you know, Coke does that quite a bit. Sometimes they'll put um, photos of how their their logo has evolved through the years. And like, you can remember like back in the 80s when they released new Coke or whatever, they had like you know, a new logo and things like that. So anytime that you can show history and nostalgia of your brand, I think is a lot of fun and people like to see that. So, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah. And then uh, uh -huh. go ahead. I was going to ask you about like, has the organic reach on social improved at all? Um, because it was, a, it was a time Laura that, I mean, uh, if you didn't put any kind of boost behind it you know your posts were not seen um so the fact that you saw a post of mine I was like oh okay <laughs> so, so i'm like wait a minute has because i didn't put any boost behind it. i just post because it was an inspirational thing yeah uh, oh. and i think now i'm i that's the one thing i wanted to check is where that i saw that post if it was from your personal account or your business account i think businesses are still really struggling um mm -hmm. It was probably my personal because I, I don't I don't do anything on my business. But, yeah. yeah. So I think I think that's probably why I saw it is because we're friends. Mm -hmm. And I think to get away from being clamped down on your posts is you really need to engage with more animated and video posts. So if you really wanted to grow your account, and I, I noticed this is the people who post majority of their, of their content is reels or short form video. They're the ones who are growing the fastest and they're the ones who are being shown to you first. Like if you ever go through like an Instagram feed, or even if you go and search, um, you know, for something new in Instagram or Facebook, you're going to see those video posts first. And so it's just the way of the platforms telling you video is how it's going. That's what, you know, that's the new it's not so new, but that's the way the creator, the yeah. creator thing is you just got to embrace the video. And I know it's really, really hard. I get it. Cause I don't like doing it either <laughs> for myself. But, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I don't, I, it's funny. Cause I don't think it's hard. I think it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's something that you have to block out of your mind that it's hard. True. If that makes sense. No, it does. And I think, and that's why some of these people are really successful is because they block that out of their mind. They don't care. They're going to get up there. They're going to do their work. They're going to do the research. They're going to make sure they have something to say. Um, and then they get out there and do it. So I think that's, you know, that's really okay. important. So, so, um, 
And then user, oh, this is the other thing that's working really well, is user-generated content. So I have a couple of examples that I was thinking about because a lot of people are like, well, how, you know, what is user-generated content? Some of it could be like reviews and things like that, that your, um, that your clients do for you. But like, if I take, do you have Aldi's and Trader Joe's up there? Oh yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Okay. So I think that people who are doing Aldi Isle of Shame. So for those who don't know what Aldi is, it's like a grocery store. And then they have like this surprise aisle, like once a week, mm. the um, products change in there. And it's, they're, they're not food items. They're usually just stuff that you would use around the house or personal items, whatever. And right. so what people are doing is they're buying these items in this um, aisle of shame, they call it. And then they're posting about it on social media. And like, this is like one huge advertisement for Aldi without it feeling like an advertisement because you're watching common people buying things and showing how they're using that in their everyday life. And Trader Joe's does the same thing. Like you've got all these people who love Trader Joe's and there's Facebook groups and everything dedicated to Trader Joe's where they're showing you how they use their food products in different recipes and reviewing it and doing all those things. So if you can get people you know, rallied around your brand to do that for you. That is huge. User generated content is huge. We'll be back after a quick break. Hello there listeners. If you're an attorney and you would love to be a guest on the show so you can promote your services to people that listen to the show and, and beyond, give us a call at 888-416-7752 or send us an email at podcast at lbmsllc.com. One of my associates in the podcasting team will send you an email and connect with you, schedule some time, send you the podcast intake form and schedule you to be interviewed on the show. So if that's something that you really would want to do, go ahead and take one of those actions and we'll take it from there. So until then, enjoy the rest of the show. User generated content. I think I had a episode about that. (laughs) Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting. So, you know, I have this one client, they're, um, a holistic health and wellness, um, client down here in Florida, and they do a good job with this. And, um, they have different devices and things that you can use in their office. And they're always giving video testimonials about how this stuff is working for them and how they swear by it. I have another restaurant client. It's restaurant clients are so much fun for me because, when they have a really good product, like their meals and their appetizers, whatever, Mm -hmm. it's so easy to get user generated content because you just tell them, send us your latest video of, you know, what you had at our restaurant this weekend and tell us why you loved it and, you know, give me permission to use it and um, we'll put it out there. So, you know, so it's just getting, getting that user generated content because that's authentic, right? It's people in their natural yeah. habit, habitat doing their thing and it's authentic stuff. Yeah. So. yeah. I, had, I had a guy, um, he was at a, um, at a fair, mm-hmm. he, he's a client of mine. He was at a fair and everyone that came up to his, his, uh, because he sponsored this event. He, anyone that came up to his, uh, table, he, he asked if they would mind doing a quick video of mm-hmm. how I was to work with them. And it was interesting. And, and, you know, he drip, drip feed it on social media himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, his admin did. I'm, I'm not sure, but it was it, all of those. I mean, and it, and it was good. It was gone. It was going for a good three months. Yeah. I mean, he didn't do it every day, but he, you know, like once or twice a week, he would post something and it's just user generated content. Yeah. And then the other thing that's really important, I think for people to do is, do different things in their social media instead of just putting a post out there. And I try and do this for my clients is, you know, make something a guide, make something a checklist, you know, something that doesn't look like your average post. Do you you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, So make it look a little different, repackage it, repurpose it in a different way. And whenever possible, animate. And, um, Canva is a great tool for animation. They just came out, they just rolled out a whole bunch of new 
things that you can do with Canva. And they've got like this magic studio and they've got some AI tied into it as well. But the magic studio is really cool because you can tell, you just click a button and say, animate this. And it just does. And you can make some tweaks if you don't like the way I animated it, but that's a, an easy way to get video out on your feeds is mm. just by using animation tools. Yeah. And I like to do that a lot, especially when I have clients, um, long distance clients who can't get me video as much as they would like to. I just animate things for them and then set it to music and then, you know, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> get her done, right? Get her done. Um, yeah, sometimes it's hard. It's like pulling teeth to get videos from yeah virtual clients. It's easy for me when they're here locally in New Jersey because I have a, a a videographer that I'll send to the client and we'll yeah. just get the video and they'll they'll do it at that point. But if to get them to do it and send it to me, I'll never get it. Never. No. But you know, so that those are some of the things that are working and you know, some of the other things that I think, you know, are kind of obvious that we didn't talk about, but planning is always important. And then identifying your content pillars, which we've talked about before, picking three to five things in your business that you really want to showcase and promote, um, but not sounding salesy, but using, you know, those three to five content pillars and offering value. But I think it's just as important to identify the things that aren't working on social media right now. And mm -hmm. one of one of those things is clickbait. Like you come <laughs> up with some, some catchy, edgy title to get everybody mm -hmm. hyped up about your stuff. And then yep. it goes nowhere, right? It was just hype. So that and, and the um algorithms are getting smart to that as well. And so they'll pull back your um exposure. And then um That's good. I like that. That's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I hate that. And then the other thing that they're looking at too, is they'll say, say you're doing a post about something and you want to know if people want more information on that post, they might say something like comment with the word, with the words, show me more or something like that, where mm -hmm. you get people just commenting the same words over and over mm -hmm. and over again. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. Cause what that's a ploy for is people trying to get engagement on a post. It's not authentic engagement. And when you start getting engagement on a post, it lights up the algorithm, right? So the algorithm thinks, oh, people find this as an important piece of content. Let's show it to more people. Um, well, now the algorithm's looking for repetitive words, right? And if they mm. see that, they're going to they're gonna reduce the exposure of the content. What about this... Uh new thing that i see on facebook now that people say at highlight and then you they say that you were tagged on a post mm -hmm. and what, what's that about you, you know what i'm talking about have you seen that um i think it just means that no, i haven't seen it but like you mean add highlight like yeah, at the at sign highlight like and they'll and then facebook tells you that so and so post uh tagged you on a post and you're not tagged. All you see is at highlight. Oh, um, I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen that. Okay. It's, it's, it's such a weird thing. I, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, somebody just, I'm like, who is this person who's tagging me? I don't even know this person. And it's, uh, and I see that it was at highlight. So I, I don't, I've, I've just been recently seeing it in the last maybe two, three months or so. Yeah. So they, they roll out different features to different people. They never roll it out all at the same time. Yeah, so, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of annoying. So that's that's bad. Um the other thing that I just, you know, this is not a strategy or a tactic for people to do social media, but it's something that they should be aware of and I'm sure you've seen it too. And I feel bad for my clients cuz sometimes they panic because it looks so official. You'll get mm. um a direct message from Facebook saying that your account's going to be deactivated if you don't yep. you know click on this link and you know do XYZ. Don't click on any links, just delete mm. it. Yeah. And uh -huh. don't interact with it because it's phishing. It's a phishing scam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. I'm like, what what do you mean deactivated for what? I've not I've done nothing. Right. So. Right. So I get them all the time and just to yeah, ignore it's, it. it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, question to for you about um, stories. I mean, I I have yet to see the 
I don't know. I guess the benefit of posting a story versus a regular post. So I think I like stories, especially on Instagram. I never, it's funny, Instagram and Facebook are the same company, but I don't watch stories on Facebook and I don't know why. <laughs> um, but I like them on on Instagram because it's kind of like real. They're supposed to be real and in the moment type of posts. So for example, you're out there and you you take a picture of something, you're somewhere and you share it to stories. It's kind of like it's it's in the moment stuff that's happening. That's kind of why I like it. It's also a great way to do short form videos um, and get in front of people very quickly. They're also interactive. So I like to use them for polls or to ask questions and get answers, those sort of things. Um, there's a lot of different features to stories. Um, you just need to go into them and, and use them. It's just an, I find stories are better for audience engagement. So if you really want so to talk is, to your so audience. It is, so it is better for audience engagement. Yeah, I really, I really like it for that. I guess um, I got to shut up and just use it, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. If you, if you think about gamifying social media, every time a social media platform rolls something out, um, you want to make use of it and you want to be an early adopter of it and um, put it in your arsenal of things that you're doing um, mm. on that platform. And the more you use the platform in all the different features available to you, the more exposure you'll get. And so this is where people kind of follow down or fall down a rabbit hole and they're thinking, I need to be on every single social media platform out there. I don't have the time for this. And then they just give up. My advice is don't do that. Find the one that you really love and then make use of that one very well. So if, if, if Instagram's your jam, you want to make sure you're using stories, you're using reels, you know, you, you're using threads, you're using all the things that they offer um, so hmm. that you're getting the most you know, bang for your buck. Have you used threads? I, yeah, of threads? I'm, I'm not a hmm. fan of threads. I, hmm. And to me, and it's it's kind of like a Twitter or an X thing for me. I don't like X either because I kind of feel like those are places you need to be when you've got like news updates like all the time. Or um, I suppose yeah. threads could be more conversational. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. It's just I, I did it and then and then I took it off my phone because it's a separate app, even though it's part of Instagram, I think you have, yeah, to, have, a yeah. separate you have app. to have a separate download. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I so I don't, I've never done it, but I'm not a social media person. So yeah, I did <laughs> it. I, I just wasn't a fan. I'd rather interact with my audience through stories and then, you know, reels and things like that. So, okay. Yeah. I, on this show, I talk a lot about LinkedIn. So I want to mm. get into that a little bit. Uh, yeah. As you know that I love LinkedIn. That's the only thing I logged into every single day it's mm -hmm. the only thing that i interact with people mostly through instant messenger i mean mm -hmm. you know dming people and then dming me back um what's up with that what's uh, any any new exciting things going on in the linkedin world, world. LinkedIn? you know what i really like for linkedin i really like videos. I think videos are doing well on LinkedIn. And so I have a couple of clients who do give me a lot of um, video content and that seems to work really, really well there. Um, I also like that they have the article feature because that kind of sets you up as, as an authority in your space. So I think that's really good. And then they have their own version of carousel posts where you um, can do several slides and not a lot of people make use of this. And I think if you want to stand out, I would do that because you can make these slides. You just download your, um, your slides as PDFs and then upload it to LinkedIn. And then you can just scroll through them. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I do, you know, I think, I think LinkedIn's very underrated, um, I think it's a great place to set yourself up as the authority in your space. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. So, How, so, so you do think it's underrated. I do. And I don't think, I think people are intimidated by it a little bit too, because they think, you know, that big businesses are there and that it's only used for finding jobs and stuff like that. 
And I really feel like, um, you really feel like it's to carve out a space for your, your niche, you know, to make you that superstar, the rock star in what you do by being active there. Yeah. You know, and I think it's the content that you put out there is important. Yeah. Well, you know, the content you put, um, I, I always tell people do not put Facebook content on LinkedIn. Right. Right. That's, that's always been my advice. <laughs> I, I think you're right. And I think in this case, I think LinkedIn, when you post on LinkedIn, it should be a little bit more polished. I think like Instagram and Facebook is more authentic. I think, you know, like you're, you're just taking a snapshot. I think because people see it, see it as a um, place where you post your resume and find jobs and things like that. Mm-hmm. I think your content needs to be a little bit more polished, needs to be a little bit more thoughtful you need to have more of an opinion there. Um, you know, that's, yeah. kinda, you know, and celebrating milestones and showing, you know, how your business is growing, I think is all really important on LinkedIn for sure. Oh, I agree. I agree. Awesome. Um, I have a question for you uh, on several, several shows back. I'd say, I want to say, in 2022 i'm gonna go back there oh god oh god i can't remember yesterday (laughs) you introduced to my audience a a platform which we have not talked about since Uh, and i would love to know if it's still around or you use it or your daughter uses it a platform by the name of be real is that still around oh gosh I don't know. I haven't heard of that in a long time. That's a good one. I'm like looking it up now. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I think it still is around. I just haven't, I haven't used it. And maybe it's one of those things, this is sad, um, that maybe um, is for the younger generations and we're showing our age. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't. I don't know. I don't know the update on that one. I'm so sorry. Hey, no worries. No worries. I was just kind of curious because I was like, wow, I've, you know, I haven't talked about it. I remember you introduced it to us and uh, I was like, huh. I said, I guess we'll have to follow that to see what's going on. But uh, Yeah. I need to ask my daughter. She's now in the working world. So I wonder if she's as connected to that kind of stuff. Probably not. Yeah. Probably, probably not. <laughs> but you know what one that's still out there that that people use to communicate on is Snapchat. Like I am amazed at that one is still around. I don't use it for business at all, but you know, my daughter and I send information back and forth to each other. And I have other friends that I, I snap with, I, which is funny. It's just funny how we choose different apps to communicate different things. I know, I know uh, that there are people who, you know, who are in the dating world, which neither, mm-hmm. of, neither of us are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and they're in the Gen Zers. I think it's mm-hmm. mostly Gen Zers that use it like this. If you want to, you know, you're out and you're dating, instead of giving you your number, they give you your Snapchat as, as a means of it being safer or whatever. Yes. I, don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, you know. I totally get that. Yeah. It's a safe way to communicate because yeah. really no information, like, you know, on, on LinkedIn, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, you can post all sorts of phone numbers, email addresses, whatever. Mm-hmm. Snapchat is a little bit safer that way, I guess. Yeah, so they'll say, hey, oh, oh, I'll give you my Snapchat. Oh, come on. Why don't you give me your number? Nope. Yeah. I'll give you my <laughs> Snapchat. I'll, yeah. I'll give you my Snapchat and we can communicate there. Yeah. Interesting. Crazy world. Um, during your one of your monologues there, when you were talking about what's going on in social media, you mentioned uh a curse word. You mentioned AI. Let's let's <laughs> let's dive into that a little bit. I swore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your take on AI? How how is that affecting social media in, in your mind? Okay, so I ran across this quote um, that I love about AI, and it goes something like this: AI won't replace you. Someone who knows how to use AI well will. I agree. So I think that people, you know, feel like jobs are going to be taken away. Um, You know, it's going to replace us, all of this stuff. No, because we are the ones who are creating AI. And I think it's, it's to be used as a tool. 
and not to replace anybody. But I think you need to know how to to use it correctly and to get the information out that you want. So you have to be thoughtful. Whenever you're inputting into AI, you have to be thoughtful about what you want the outcome to be. You can't just say, tell me X, Y, Z and be happy with it because you're going to get garbage, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Um, and AI is being used for so many different things. I have a client who create who's created um, an AI app that predicts what the real estate market is going to look like in Tampa Bay. And so he's created this tool where it's going to help investors and real estate agents move properties to the people who actually really need them. So say, say I'm an investor and I want to purchase some property that is going to be a rental property for me in the future. This tool will tell me, you know, based on the rent that I'm looking for, the type of home I'm looking for, like it'll do predictive calculations to let me know what I can expect to make in rent like this year, five years from now, how the the area is going to develop, you know, what I can expect from the socioeconomic demographics of that area and stuff like that. So I, I think we need to look at AI as a tool that is going to like augment our lives, make it better, make us make us make better decisions, more informed decisions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't, I don't think it's the boogeyman. I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually think it's um, a great tool that we can use. I use it when I can't think like if something's not coming out, you know, out of my brain and through my fingers and onto the keyboard the way I want it to, I'll go to AI. And I'm like, can you help me make this sound better? Like the thought is already there or I'm going down a path and I'm like, okay, but what's my end game? Like, what, how do I want this to, to sound at the end? And, and I'll say, can you finish this thought for me? You know, have you ever gotten that where you've had a thought and you just can't like, like finish it and you want it to come out eloquently. And I use AI for that sometimes to help me finish. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I, I try, I try not to get my thought finished because remember I was married four times. So I didn't, I hate, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> No, I've never used uh, AI that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can get really creative with the way that you use it. Um, so I, try, I tried this yesterday, actually. I thought it was kind of interesting. I was, I forget what I was working on, but it was a complicated, a complex thing. And I'm like, all right, if I write this, this is going to turn into like, you know, a couple paragraphs long. And I, I don't want that. I want it more concise. So I asked um, ChatGPT, I said, can you explain this to a kin to kindergartner, to a five-year-old mm. in simplistic terms? And it was really kind. Oh, I know. I wanted an analogy about something that a five-year-old would understand. And it, it did a, such a great job. And it gave the analogy through um, a playground. And it was exactly what I looked for. I, I'm like, trying to think now what I write mm. so much content in the day, in a day that I forget like what I've used mm. um, different things for. I, I'm trying to think, I actually think it was a law thing um, that mm. I was trying to figure out, but is, I just, is chat GPT the one you use the most? Yeah, that's the one I use. Sometimes like LinkedIn has its own version um, Canva has its own version. So depending on where I am, oh, the one thing about Canva that's really cool is say I wanted um, a post, like a graphic post for something, it'll say, put in five words that describes what you're trying to come up with. And it creates a photo. It's not like Dolly, which is like very abstract and weird, I think, mm -hmm. but um, Canva will come together with the, and it's pretty, it, and sometimes it uses imagery that I never thought of. Mm -hmm. Um which I think is kind of cool. So I was doing something about, you know, wisdom. I, wisdom wasn't, isn't the quite, quite the right word, but it did come back with an owl. And I know it's kind of obvious now that I say wisdom and owl, like usually is goes together. But at the time I wasn't putting that graphic together in my head and it just generated something that I'm like, oh, I could go somewhere with this. So while I didn't use what they suggested, I actually took their idea and ran with it and came out with something that worked out really well for me. So nice. I just, um, do you, have you ever heard of perplexity? 
Yes. I haven't tried it yet, though. Yeah, that's the one I use mostly. Actually, it was managed IT is what I was doing. That's what I asked them. I said, can you tell me, explain managed IT to me so that a five-year-old would understand it? Because and it, and it gave you a good, it gave you a good analogy, a good it gave, explanation. Yep. And the reason awesome. why that was important to me is because this IT client I'm working for does not want to be too techy. He doesn't want to scare his potential clients off. He wants to speak their language. Mm. And so, and sometimes in the tech world, we can use acronyms and do all sorts of crazy things that nobody yeah. understands. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's a good, that's a good usage of, uh, of, uh, of AI. I'm glad to. Uh, I'm glad uh, we we went down that that path. Um, yeah. That's interesting. I mean that that's, that's those are great updates. I think um, I think you know it's this is why I like to do this every six months because it's amazing to me how different or I, I mean it wasn't necessarily that much different from you know six months ago. Mm-hmm. However, it's improved. Like mm-hmm. it's it's giving you you know, more, more oomph, if you will, uh, into what we talked about six months ago and and what's improving, what no longer we should be using, like the clickbait stuff. Mm -hmm. So kudos, kudos. I really love it. I really appreciate you doing this every six months. Uh, Yeah. uh, My audience also approves, uh, loves it too. Cause um, it's, like I said, it's always like around the second or third most downloaded uh, episode. Really? Every time I, uh, uh, you know, promote it. So there you go. Well, and I know I this love, one's going to be no different. <laughs> I love coming here and chit-chatting with you and talking about all the things that are awesome. going on in the digital space, for sure. Uh, awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Now, here comes the segment that makes uh, Laura uncomfortable. It does. It's the, it's the, it's the, <laughs> it's the get to know Laura Shipman a little better segment. <laughs> are you ready for that? <laughs> I am. Uh, so forewarning, this is going to be a little bit more difficult than it was the other times. I mean, you've been able to fire off answers. And of course, if you cannot come up with an answer um, for any of these things, then no problem. I okay. can understand because I know okay. these are difficult. But I'm going to start. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to start off with a, a softball launch. OK, OK. So first softball. question is, do you believe in ghosts? You know what? Yes, I do. I, I believe in um maybe not haunting ghosts. I believe in spirit. Like I believe when someone passes, like their spirit is with you. I, I, f- I believe you can talk to them. Mm-hmm. I do. So yes, I do. I'm spiritual that way. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Good. See, I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Um. So all right, now it's going to get interesting. Okay. <laughs> Tell uh, all my secrets. What was your biggest fear when you first settled? I mean, when you first um, started your business? That I, huh, that I'd probably um, lose all my money and live on a box under the highway or in a box under the highway. Like I was really nervous that I wouldn't make it. Um, mm-hmm. I was a single mom at the time mm-hmm. and um, I, you know, I had a lot going on in my life at the time. And I'm like, I took my last, this is back in 2007, my last $60 and invested in a digital business and it was really scary. Um, but I had to take a bet on myself. And, you know, it's funny when life throws you curveballs, because I was really sick back then too. That, that was the other part of it. So as a single mom, um, I just got a chronic diagnosis and I was broke and I, I needed to work from home because at the time I couldn't drive. Like it's a long story, but, um, but I was like, you know, if I'm going to bet on anything, I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to make this work. And here we are in 2024, um, you know, and I'm, I'm doing great. So, yeah. 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 So you did it anyway, even though I you did were scary, it. you did it anyway. That's I awesome. did it anyways. I thought I was going to lose everything, but I didn't. And you didn't. All right. Uh, what is the thing that motivates you to get up every morning? Oh, to be better. Like I just, like, I want to do better. I want to be better. Um, so I get up at five 30 every morning, I have a cup of coffee and then I, you know, to be better physically, I go out and I walk three and a half miles every day. And then I come home and, you know, just how can I serve my clients better? How can I serve my business better? How can I serve my family better? It's always what I'm looking for. And how can I evolve as a person? So that's what motivates me is just being better. Being, being a better person. All mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Last questions. Uh, what's the best advice? 
Now, this is a, this is a deep one. What's okay. the best advice that 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 you've ever received from an unlung, unlikely source? Wow. That from um, gosh, I kind of feel like I have to think about that. I'm trying to think who would the um. All right, let me think about that. Do you have another question? We'll come back nope, to it. That was that's the only. That's, that's the, the only last one. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know, Frank. Um, I'm trying to think, like, from an unlikely source, I would think it would be like my daughter telling me something, and it would probably just be her, like, as a child. Like we're talking like a a young child. Um, and I'm like, she's got more perspective on life than I ever do. You know what I mean? Like you learn yeah. things from your kids. And I don't yeah. know exactly what that lesson is or what that advice was, but it, I'm, my guess is yeah, something guess like that. Daughter, yeah, yeah, no, no that's yeah. a good one because usually a, you know, someone would fire off something and you're like, whoa, I never thought yeah. of it that way. Or, yeah. You know, interesting. Oh, well, you see, wasn't that go. bad, was it? Those weren't that hard. Actually, I like those kind of deep <laughs> questions. It's like, because you do get to know someone a little bit better every time you have those. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome yeah. sauce. Well, there you have it, folks. You. Got to know four more questions from uh, Lord Shipman, and in six months, there'll be four more. <laughs> and, of course, what's going on in social media. So with that, I'm going to put an end to this episode. This has been Frank Deming, the local business guy. You've just been blessed by the great Laura Shipman. Until six months for her, and until next week for me, take care, and bye for now. It's out! Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you would like to know more about the topic we discussed in the show today, reach out to Frank and his team at 888-416-7752 and schedule a discovery call with one of the marketing consultants. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, send an email to podcast at lbmsllc.com and we will put you on the schedule. With that being said, until next week, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.